Stephanie! Stephanie! Oh, we have to find her! Why do I have to come? She's not my imaginary girlfriend. Because you're the reason that she got mad and left in the first place. All I said was she looked a little extra large today. Uh -huh. <laughs> wow! What a cool place! Hey, what are you doing at this local ER? Loko Ia, or Hawaiian fish ponds, are man-made ponds built by our kupuna, Hawaiian ancestors, to enclose an area of the ocean, creating a natural environment to make it easier to harvest fish. Fish ponds are a self-sustaining ecosystem in that no outside inputs are required. The energy that feeds the system is the sun. As the sun comes down and feeds the phytoplankton and zooplankton, that is in turn what feeds the fish, feeds the crabs, feeds the shrimp, feeds everything in the system. Us as human beings don't have to touch anything in the pond except when we want to harvest. Hawaiian fish ponds can act as a natural ecosystem. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, monitors the planet's ecosystems to better understand how natural processes affect different animals and their habitats. Here at NOAA, we use a variety of different instruments, including satellite data and field measurements, to monitor the conditions of our oceans and also uh, observe and track different weather patterns. And we use this not only to better understand the different processes, but we also make all this data and information available to the community and policymakers in an effort to help them make decisions that will protect our natural resources. Uh, we are um, looking for my friend's girlfriend. Okay, but don't touch anything. This is an important place. Oh man! Those fish are trying to get out, but they're way too big to fit through there. Well, I'll just make a bigger hole then. <laughs> Look, they're so happy. Dude, I think they built it that way on purpose. Huh? Hawaiian fish ponds were built nearly 2,000 years ago and are an amazing feat of engineering and community work. Imagine if you had a refrigerator that was always stocked with fresh fish. Back in ancient Hawaii, they didn't have refrigerators, but they did have fish ponds. Fish ponds allowed them an easier way and a more consistent way, as well as a more sustainable way to harvest fish from the ocean. As the fish come into the pond, they live, they survive. As they go out, we can harvest them and in fact, sometimes we let some out so that they can start the process all over again and bring babies back into the pond. What if those fish were supposed to be in that pond? But they're already out in the ocean. That's the problem. We have to get them back before anyone finds out what we did. Maybe I can ask them to come back in. Hello, fish, please come back here. Well, I'm out of ideas. Yeah. Man, this fish pond is so much fun! Yeah! Hey, fishes! Come and join the party! Ooh, I love this fish pond! This is a oh, fun yeah. place! Oh, I guess fish don't like resorts. Dinner time! Worms are over here for eat worms. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Get them while they slimy. Mm. These are so delicious. I don't think the fish like these worms. Man, how did the Hawaiians get the fish here in the first place? <laughs> worms are not going to get the fish back in the pond. The ancient Hawaiians built fish ponds near freshwater streams. 
The baby fish on the outside of the pond were attracted at low tide to swim into the pond because of the smell of the nutrient-rich brackish water. As the fish live in the pond, they grow fat eating algae and plankton. When the tide rises, the adult fish are attracted to the salt water and try to leave the pond. But unfortunately, they can't get out because they're too fat to fit through the gate. So the design of all Hawaiian fish ponds, where they place their gates, how close they place the fish pond to the streams, was actually all tied into the lunar cycle because ultimately, knowing and understanding when the moon was gonna be full and when the moon was gonna be new was very important to knowing when you can eat, when you can harvest the fish. There's actually a very close relationship between our planet and the moon. The moon exerts a gravitational pull on our planet and when this happens, depending on the location of the moon, the oceans are either pulled or repelled away or closer to the moon. This gives rise to our daily tides. There's several ways in which we can measure our ocean tides. For instance, we can use tide gauges and we can also use computers to model and to help us understand how the tides behave and how they change through time. With this information, we can know how high or how low tides are gonna be anytime, anywhere in our world. Look, the fish is starting to return. Stephanie! Ooh. What? brought one of the fish back just for me. Oh, thank you, my love. Don't ever scare oh, me like oh that again. Oh. <laughs> That's his girlfriend? Yeah. Unbelievable, right? Very. She's totally out of his league. 